Have you ever watched a film that started with you just going, meh, but then it ended up with you saying, yeah, that's the topic for today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, a film that just gets better and better as it goes along and includes a villain that you really love to hate. Let's check it out. Today's film is The Beast Must Die, or in my impeccable Spanish, La Bestia de Bay Morir. This is a film from Argentina, 1952, 104 minutes, beautiful black and white. It's in Spanish with English subtitles. This is about a crime novelist named Felix whose nine-year-old son is killed in a hit-and-run car accident. And uh, he is understandably devastated by this. He's also a widower. So uh, gradually he starts to infiltrate this family because he suspects one of those family members was the person who was driving the car that killed his son. Now the first 20 minutes of this film, that was the meh part for me because it's uh, it all takes place in one setting, this, uh, this big mansion where all these characters are gathered. And uh, there's a lot of characters, maybe about eight or 10. And it's, there's so much exposition and so much dialogue and it's going so fast, it's hard to get a grip on who these people are. Uh, some are sisters and then there's a sister-in-law and then there's who's married to who and who's having an affair with who. Then there's a little kid and it's really difficult to figure out and a lot of exposition and just everything's explained that way. And so it's very confusing but um, one character who is, turns out to be the villain of the piece um, is poisoned at the very beginning of the film in this first 20 minutes. I'm not giving anything away. It happens like in the first five minutes or so. And almost everyone in the room dislikes this guy. And uh, so they all have a motivation and a reason to kill him. So I thought, is this going to be like a 10 Little Indians thing? You know, the Agatha Christie novel? where everybody's gathered in a room and one is the killer, sort of like that film Knives Out. The Ten Little Indians have been imitated over and over again. I thought, that was this going to be? I hope not, because it's kind of been done to death, and so far this is not looking too good. Well, and then one man, he's seen here, right away, I think, this guy, he's guilty of something, because he almost looks satanic in this film, right? Uh, but that turns out that's our crime novelist, Felix, whose son was killed, and then the rest of the film, for the most part, as a flashback of what happened to him and what happened to his son and uh, how he starts to gradually learn who the guilty party is. And we follow him on this quest to find out who's responsible for the death of his son. So there's a lot of dramatic irony involved because we in the audience, we know what, what happened to him, what happened to his kid. We know why he's getting involved in this family, but nobody else in the film knows that. So the great thing is the guy who initially we kind of thought he looks like a bad guy turns out to be the good guy and the guy that we have a lot of empathy for. Um, now the man who was poisoned, his name is Rattery in the film, and he's a guy, like I mentioned at the beginning, you just love to hate. He is cruel to everyone regardless of their age, regardless of their gender, regardless of their relationship to him. And he's just really gross and he's uh, physically abusive and he's verbally abusive. And I don't want to say exactly what he does because that's part of the fun of uh, seeing how low this guy can really go. And so many people in this film, I think everybody in this film, just hate him. And there's uh, various ways also that they kind of, um, uh, kind of uh, red herrings that lead you to how possibly somebody could have been the guilty person who killed this guy, Rattery. Well, uh, it's very involving because we want to see him get punished. We want his comeuppance for being such a jerk. And we, and we also know that he was the one driving the car. Um, so we, keep, uh, we, we do keep guessing who the killer is. Was it Felix who finally killed Rattery? Who poisoned him? And uh, of course, I'm not going to give that away. So this is a, a film noir. There are several film noir elements, uh, of course, the main idea with this guy, Felix, going out on his own, trying to find justice for what happened. The nighttime scenes, very noirish, very impressive looking, and with that high contrast lighting and the, and the atmosphere and the, the shadows and stuff. And uh, there is a one sequence where he's just so overwhelmed by grief and it's a montage, very surreal of 
people talking and trying to give him information about what happened to his son. He's trying to find out who was driving that night and what happened. Um, this was actually based on a novel by uh, the father of Daniel Day-Lewis, the famous actor. I had no idea he was a novelist. It was a pretty influential novel too. And But what they did in this film is they kind of flipped it around. So um, they put the ending first in this film. In the novel, that ending when they're all in the room together and he's poisoned, that comes at the end of the novel. But here they put it first. Kind of a daring thing to do. And I guess it kind of works. Um, the screenplay was actually written by the director and the star of the film. The director was Roman Vinoli Barreto. He also directed a film called uh, El Vampiro Negro, The Black Vampire, which is going to be released on uh, Blu-ray in November, so next month. I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of that one. And the star who co-wrote the screenplay with him is Narciso Ibanez Menta. And uh, he apparently is a very iconic uh, presence in horror films in uh, Argentina, sort of on the level of a Vincent Price. And his big idol when he was learning his craft was Lon Chaney. So he wears different makeup in every film and very emotional. He's very sympathetic in this film. You really are rooting for him and really feel terrible for him. So it's a good performance by this guy. I'm going to give The Beast Must Die four and a half cars out of five cars, of course, because there was a hit and run accident in here. Um, so what's on this disc? Well, it's a Flickr Alley disc, and I've talked about them before. They've done several uh, film noirs before. They're all great. You can see some of them back here. There's three up there. There's a couple down there. I think I recommend them all. I think they're all really good. And it's a uh, visually, this looks great. Apparently the uh, source material for the film was in really terrible shape. So I wish they had put something on here like a comparison so we could see what it looked like and how the, how the preservation is so much different. But it looks great. It sounds great. It's got that four to three aspect ratio. So it's a square picture. You're going to see bars on both sides of the um, screen. Um, this, this was uh, produced by the Film Noir Foundation uh, and uh, UCLA, and apparently without them this would have never happened, especially Eddie Muller, who gives a six-minute introduction to the film. He's just always great, but a lot of credit goes to him from some of the other people saying without him this would have never really uh, been possible. Um, there's a booklet. There's also a DVD in here, so it's a Blu-ray and a DVD in here. There is a booklet, which is very nice. It's a stapled. It's about a little over 20 pages. There's the uh, Argentinian uh, poster for it. And it's got some photos from the film. It's got some background photos of, uh, uh, on the set. And um, good information about the film. And uh, an example of, I don't know if you can see that or not, of the great noir look of it. There, there he is standing in the in nighttime, standing in the alleyway. So, um, like I said, there's a, uh, a there's an introduction by Eddie Muller. These are the extras. There's an introduction by Eddie Muller, um, about six minutes long, very good. There's an interview with the director's son. It's about 30 minutes. It's in Spanish with subtitles. There's a short feature about the main actor. There he is there, the guy I mentioned before. And uh, there's a commentary track, which I did not listen to. So another solid, solid effort from uh, Flickr Alley. I love to support them. Um, so where can you see The Beast Must Die? It's not going to be easy to find. You know, if you are a collector or you buy these things, they are going to have a sale, I think, uh, in November. So you might want to wait for that and check it out, check the sale price out. And otherwise, it's been shown on a TCM before, so maybe they'll show it again, or maybe on the TCM app, you can find it there. So I recommend The Beast Must Die. You know, it's not the greatest film noir I've ever seen, but, you know, once you get past the first 20 minutes, then you understand what's happening better, and then it really starts getting very involving. So feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down below. Leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. See you next time.